Welcome to Fun with Acid Base Extraction, a flowchart experience. We're going to be going through uh, the main rules of acid base extraction. And due to that, we're going to be looking at the acid base extraction gauntlet available on Canvas. First, the essential skills. The first and foremost is if you can recognize and draw the acidic or protonated form of a molecule and the basic or deprotonated forms of a molecule, that's really the crux of uh, figuring out these flow charts. After that, there's just a few simple rules. If the pH is less than the pKa, a molecule will exist in its acidic form. If the pH of the solution is greater than the pKa, the molecule will exist in its basic form. And then just remember, like dissolves like rule. Neutral organic molecules tend to dissolve in organic solvents, like say ether. Um, organic molecules do not tend to dissolve well in water unless they have a charge. And that is going to be the key to separation. Let's do this. So here we have the extraction gauntlet we'll be going through. Let's meet our molecules that we'll be separating. In this corner, we have para-bromo-benzoic acid. <sighs> so, notice here how we're given a pKa for the molecule. That means that what we're looking at is the acidic form of aforementioned molecule. When you're first doing these types of problems, I highly recommend drawing out what the molecule looks like in its acidic and basic forms. So, here we know that this is in its acidic form. The basic form will look strikingly similar, except we're going to deprotonate it. We're going to replace this H plus here with a lone pair, and we're going to drop the formal charge. So let's draw out the basic form of the molecule. Again, it looks strikingly similar to our first molecule, but now instead of the proton, we're going to have that negative formal charge. For our next contestant, we have this para tert butyl phenol here. And once again, notice that we're given a pKa for the molecule. That means that we're looking at the acidic form. And on the exam, we'll clarify what the acidic proton is, but here we can see it's going to be this fellow right here. So once again, we're going to write out that this is the acidic form of the molecule. And then we're going to draw the basic form of this molecule. Again, basically the same exact structure, except we're going to deprotonate it and replace that hydrogen with another lone pair and a negative formal charge. Cool. So for this one, you'll notice that we're given the pKa of the conjugate acid. That means that we must be looking at the basic form of this molecule. A little bit different from the previous two. So we're just going to write out mm, basic. And now let's draw the acidic form of this molecule. So we're going to draw the exact same thing, except we're going to replace that lone pair with a proton, which will give us a positive formal charge. And there we have the acidic form of this molecule. Cool. Now let's take a look at this last one. This one has a pKa of 36. Lol. <laughs> so we could deprotonate this with a uh, solution with a pH of like 37, but come on, that's just ridiculous. So this molecule really isn't going to do much in terms of acid-base chemistry. This is just going to exist in the acidic form that you observe right here. So it's basically just going to go along for the ether ride. Now that we've drawn out our structures and labeled them as acidic or basic and had our good lull at that um, cycloheptene triene molecule thing, um, the rest of the problem really falls into place nicely. So let's take a look at that rule about pH versus pKa and see how that influences the state of our molecule. Notice in this first step, that we're adding water with a pH of 2. So, now let's take a look at each of our molecules and figure out if they'll be in their acidic or basic form. So for this first molecule, we can see that the pH is 
less than the pKa. So that means this will exist in its acidic form. Wapow! There we go. That's what it would look like. So let's see what the other structures would like look like under this particular pH. For this next one, once again, the pH is less than the pKa. So this molecule will also exist in... Wapow! It's acidic form. Okay, moving on to our next one, our amine over here. Once again, the pH is less than the pKa of our conjugate acid, which means this will exist in... Wapow! It's acidic form. Okay. And then lastly, we have this molecule here, which again, lol, it's just going to exist in its acidic form, which is somewhat hard to draw, but looks something like this. So now we have to ask ourselves a question. Which one of these is not like the other? Which one will go into the aqueous layer? If you guessed, whoo, ding, 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 the charged one, you are right. So whichever one has the charge, we're going to put into the water layer. And that's how we're going to do this extraction. Kabloomers! The rest of them are just going to stay in the ether layer until we can ionize them and make them go into an aqueous layer. we have successfully isolated our first molecule. Now, we're just going to continue this same exact process until we can get everything separated out of that ether. So what's the deal practically with acid-base extraction? Well, we can put things into a separatory funnel, seen here, and water and our organic solvent, in this case ether, form immiscible layers. So, what ends up in the water layer? Our charged species. What stays in the ether? All of our neutrally charged species. Ahem! <clears throat> All of our neutrally charged species. Ah, good. There we go. We can then drain off the water layer and isolate our, in this case, amine. With our amine component isolated, we can continue our extraction and try to get the rest of these components in our ether layer separated. But how? With more acid-base chemistry! So now let's see how we can extract these remaining three molecules. So, next we're adding water with a pH of 6. Is that going to be strong enough to deprotonate the things with a pKa of 9? Or the pKa of lol? I should think not. They're going to be in their acidic form, which are neutral. However, our molecule with the pKa of 4.0, well, if the pH is 6, that's going to exist in its basic form, which remember is... Boom! Ionized. So it'll end up in our aqueous layer. Meanwhile, our other two components that are going to remain neutral are going to stay in the ether layer. So whatever became of our amine that we isolated in water before? Well, currently it's ionized. In order to truly extract it, we want to make this molecule neutral again so that it will precipitate out of the water. So what we can do is we can adjust the pH of the water that it's in to 12 we can put it in a fairly basic environment. And when we do that, will this be in its acidic form or basic form? Well, since the pKa is 10.7, and that's less than the pH that we're adjusting to, this must exist in its basic form, which you'll recall is neutral. Since neutrally charged organic molecules do not have a good affinity for water, this will suddenly Oh, precipitate out. Okay, we've isolated the one molecule, then we can put it in um, a vacuum filter flask, dry it, and enjoy our product. But we can't rest on our laurels yet. 
for we have more things to isolate. So, back to our parabromo uh, benzoic acid, or benzoate right now, because it's charged. We're going to adjust the pH to 2. Now, recall that since this has a pKa of 4, will this be in its acidic form or basic form if we adjust the pH to 2? It'll be in its acidic form, which is neutral, which means it will precipitate out. Now, two molecules isolated, two to go. Next, we're going to add water, the pH of 12, and put it into our separatory funnel. What will happen then? Well, is a pH of 12 enough to deprotonate this with a pKa of 9.9? .9? Since the pH is greater than the pKa, this will exist in its boom basic form, which is charged, so it'll go into the water. Meanwhile, our friend, the seven-membered ring, is going to stay riding ether train. Now, just a note about ether. Once we finally only have one molecule left in the ether, in this case, our friend right here, um, ether's pretty volatile, so we could actually just pour this onto a watch glass or something with a great surface area. The ether would evaporate off, and we'd be left with our purified compound. So, last things last, we want to precipitate this. So, we're going to adjust the pH to 7, which will put it back in its acidic form, which will give us our... Well, boom! Precipitate. Now we can see we have all of our molecules nice and neutrally charged and all isolated in their own respective solutions. Or if we thought ahead, drying nicely with our purified product. So thus concludes our acid-base extraction gauntlet. I hope that you found this to be useful and more so hope that you dominate the exam. Thank you for watching and have a great day.